Okay, Code Bakers, when we last left off, George had moved into a new city and he had the capability to make new friends. The lower left hand pane, there is a friend counter. Right now, there's no challenge or barrier for George. He can just walk up to the friend and make friends. Right now, George is at one friend. He intersects with another friend. He, now he's at two friends. We're gonna set up a small challenge for George such that he has to get a housewarming gift. There are four pieces of baked goods. Uh, there's a apple pie, choco cake, cheesecake, and cookies that we're gonna place around the screen. The previous video focused on creating this tiles uh, TMX file with has placement. We're gonna load in the baked goods object layer from the tile map. So I'm gonna break it onto a separate method here. Uh, maybe put it into a separate file even uh, later, but this is just to get our onload method within main.dart, the main flame game, a bit more organized. So we'll call it add baked goods right now with a little underscore in the front. And it's gonna accept a tiled component. It's the home map. We're gonna load in the home map, this tiled component, within the main onload method. And then we'll pass it over to the, um, the, the individual loaders that we'll build. If you recall this, these baked goods, they're not actually glued onto the map. All we're reading in is the size and the position of each of the baked goods. And there's a baked goods type, so like chocolate cake or apple pie, which we're gonna use as the way to get the correct sprite component graphic onto the screen. Once we load in the home map, we can then extract the tile map and then from the tile map, we can grab the, the layer of the, uh, the, all, the, all, the, all the objects in a specific layer. So we've named the layers specific names. And the layer that our baked goods is on is called baked goods. So the tile map dot get objects by layer name, uh, that's from the flame tiled and uh, it's a specific method that's from flame tile this is how we're going to access it and that baked goods is a string from our map.tmx when i reload the game the objects will not be appearing at this stage so i want to make sure that we can grab the information i'm going to start off by copying the friend box for loop you know we had a separate an, an earlier loop to go through the layer where their friends are on and so I'll just start off with that one and first copy it in. We're calling our baked goods group, but there's this add friend component, right? So if you recall that friend component, we extended a sprite component and there is no sprite component model for the baked goods. We have to create that. But I'll set up the rest of it right now. At the current time, I'm placing all the assets. So even if the baked good is not really a character, I'm still gonna put it in this characters folder just so that we don't have that many folders on our system. And I guess the pastry is a form of a character. So let's clear a new file called baked good components and create a new class that extends the sprite component We'll have to import flame, of course. I think it was automatically imported above line three. You can't see it right now. And then we'll set up the constructor for the baked good component. And I'm gonna initialize in the, in the constructor of the debug mode to true. We want to use the collidable system that's built into Flame. So we'll use the mixins for the has hitboxes and collidable. A little bit later, we'll actually set up the hitbox for the 
um, in the constructor. So I copied this from the friend component and in the friend component, we're passing the entire game as this. However, in the baked good component, we're gonna use the mixin has game ref. And that will basically function the same as passing the entire game over. So let's use this uh, mixin has game ref. And then we'll use these angle brackets and we'll put the name of the class that we created for flame game. So the class that we created is my George game. This is something that we specified. I'm going to actually put the, that method to load the baked goods in a, a separate folder. I'm going to call it loaders. And then we'll have maybe a few different loaders in this uh, subfolder called loaders. So let's create a new file in loaders. We'll call it baked good loader. And I'll copy that method from this um, main.dart because it was actually getting a little long. Maybe I'll call it add baked goods to keep it consistent with the name of the function. So let's select it, cut it out, and paste it into add baked goods dart. Then do the imports. So Todd component, I'm using control dot on VS Code. And the the baked good component vector two so in order to add this component to the game from this function i'm actually going to pass it the game from the main.dart file so in the uh, the parameters list here we'll add a type of my george game and we'll call it game. And then on line 12, then we could access that method from the my George game. So going back to main.dart, all we need to do is now pass it the uh, this game. Oh, it was uh, private before. And then we'll just pass it this. Using control dot, I'm going to import the file we just created. Okay, let's test it, make sure everything works. Uh, we won't be able to see anything, but we're looking for any type of error. Uh, one of the things that we will need to do is to add a sprite to the constructor. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So I had earlier tried line 11 and there's an error here. So you can, I'm gonna delete that line 11. Let's just put it right here in the constructor await game.load sprite and then the name of the file that we want to load. So I'm going to load the apple pie as a test for all of them. Let's reload it and see what happens. Okay, it looks like we've got some apple pie. Oh, quite a bit of it actually. If you recall, even though there's only four baked goods on our screen there were eight entries and that's because four of the entries were for the image that was only specific to the editing with tiled if you recall on the tiled editing we specified a string uh, that we selected and that we named each of the different types of pastries or baked goods with a a specific string so we called it for example apple pie so we'll set up a switch statement to look for the type of the baked goods and that type is something that we put into as a string in, it, in one of the fields so in the case that it's an apple pie again something that we specified we'll um, maybe just break it or print out so if you look at line 28 
that's the type, right? So let's move that instantiation of the baked good into the switch statement. So only in the case that the type is apple pie will we load the sprite for the apple pie. So right now, instead of having eight of these components on the screen, we should only have one. Remembering back to when we edited or created the uh, objects on the tile D map, the apple pie is over here on the upper right. Let's copy and paste the different cases so that we can cover all four pastry types or baked good types. So I have to make sure that this case is in the map.tmx file as this exact string. This is the connection point to the map.tmx file. And this is how we're actually getting all the properties, for example, the position. And let's look for the cookie. I guess this is part of the game where the, hopefully your user will go around and look for the cookie. I don't see the cookie. There was no cookie because I called the graphic file name cookies, not cookie. I probably should have called it cookie because everything else is singular. However, uh, I don't know, maybe I liked the cookies and I, I can already see it over there on the right hand side of the screen. So collision detection is not set up yet, but at least we have the cookies on the screen. So there are two chances for error here. One is the case, which has to be the object type from the map.tmx file. And the other one is the name of the file. That is the graphic file that we want to appear on the screen. So there are two different things we need to check. Cheesecake, oddly enough with a capital C. I, I probably should have made that thing lowercase, but kind of stuck with it now. And then the cheesecake.png. Notice that there's a different uh, case spelling, uh, kind of an error on my part. Hopefully you're more consistent than I am. And we'll end it off with the choco cake. with a camel case, so that C in the choco cake is uppercase. But uh, in the file name of the PNG, I used an underscore. Okay, let's give it a go. And yeah, I think that's the chocolate cake right there, right below the second neighbor to be a easy find. The cheesecake was more difficult one. If you recall, we placed it lower on the screen. So if they really need to find this thing, they'd have to like go to the lower part of the map. I guess they would probably see it, right? Because they're maybe depending how they meet that first neighbor. Going back to the code uh, in the main.dart file, let's create a new integer variable to hold the number of baked goods in inventory. So under the friend number, which is the primary scorekeeper, he's trying to get a lot of friends, like 100 friends. Let's create an integer for baked goods inventory. Uh, this will be the number of baked goods in inventory. When he meets a friend in the future, the inventory will decrease by one, and he'll have to get um, some level of inventory prior to meeting the different friends. It's possible that we could add some additional complexity with, for example, nut allergy, uh, dairy intolerance, or, or perhaps a dairy allergy, or uh, you know, gluten-free baked products. However, right now, all the baked goods are the same. Let's add a hitbox to the baked good so that we can take an action when the player George hits the baked good. Because we, we have it with the collidable and the has hit boxes, we can access the built-in on collision method. So this is built into 
flame. And for some reason, VS Code is not auto-completing this for me, so I'm going to have to start typing it in. And I think it was set um, with a vector 2, yeah. And then the position. I guess I could uh, click it and, uh, or control click it and see the actual code, but I think this is it. Intersection points and collidable. And then we'll increase the baked goods inventory with the game ref. And we'll print the baked good just in the debug console right now. We didn't create an overlay yet. We just want to make sure that we can place the baked goods on the screen using the tiled map data and then take some action with the baked goods once we uh, once the player, George, he picks up the baked goods. And then we'll remove the baked good because once you eat a chocolate cake, it's not coming back. So let's test out George. Okay. Okay, he got the chocolate cake. The chocolate cake did disappear. And it did appear in our debug console as one. So there should be four possible pastries he can get. He just got another one. And that was the apple pie. And I think the cheesecake was way down on the beach of Happy Bay Village. Oh, there's a cheesecake. Okay. So we got all four baked goods and inventory is at four in the debug console. If you're looking at the purple box for debug mode, it seems a little big. I'm going to decrease the hit box around the baked good component so that the collidable area is about half. Let's go check it out now. There should be a, uh, a smaller purple box within the larger purple box. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a, there's a smaller purple box around, that, around the chocolate cake, that piece. And then there's a larger purple box around that to indicate the entire size of the tile. But the, the only collidable portion will be that smaller inner portion. I'm also going to reduce the size of the hitbox around George. Because George has a pretty big hitbox right now. And although it's kind of nice to make the collision easy, um, I just want to make it a little bit smaller uh, so that you know at least the cake and George would be touching or close to touching at least. You can see that there's an inner box around George. It looks a little bit better. So in the next few videos, we'll create an audio pool and have some additional audio sound effects, such as a, maybe a cheer or some type of happy human noise when he does make a friend and also some audio indication when he does pick up the pastry. Also, uh, maybe I'll put an over, uh, like an underlay or background color on the top and bottom um, overlay right now because it, it is kind of hard to see. And I think that we actually probably want to use that data during the gameplay. Right, congratulations. George is going to be in a great position to make friends. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.